This is Mr. Brown, instructor in A Flight, and this is the second part of my series of videos on how to review an instrument approach plane. In the previous video, we discussed the background and some of the philosophy about reviewing an instrument approach plate. In this part, I'll discuss the technique of the end mailman check to review the approach. If you have not looked at part one of the series, I highly recommend you do so before we get to this, uh, to this video. So the end mailman, there are some pros and cons for doing an end mailman. One of the pros is that it's a very thorough review. It makes sure that you are going to review all of the things that you need, potentially need, or are important to fly this instrument approach. It covers all of those details. Now, the biggest con about the end mailman is that it's very lengthy. It takes a long time to do it that way, letter by letter. It jumps around from one area to another area, and it doesn't really follow much of a logical or a chronological flow. This also can tend to be a little bit long time consuming to where by the time you finish, maybe you forgot some of those numbers that you briefed at the beginning of your briefing. So that's one of the, the problems. If you are going to use the end mailman, then it's real important that you chair fly it, you practice it a lot, be able to get that down to just a couple minutes. Uh, you know what the letters are, you know what you wanna say, and it becomes not just a fill the box, hey, I've done it, but it really does become a review so that yeah, I'm refreshed on some of the details of what I'm gonna do and I'm now ready to go do it. You can find the end mailman in AETC manual 11248. It's in paragraph 7.26.4.2.1. And this is what the end mailman stands for. N is nav aid, so the first nav aid you wanna do is set them up for your positional awareness. M, brief the minimums. I mean all of the minimum altitudes, the ones on the approach, the minimum safe, the emergency safe, the weather minimums, all of the altitude restrictions that you have as you fly the approach. The A is for altimeter. Make sure that you have the correct altimeter put in. I is your initial rate of descent. Notice that AETC manual 11248 doesn't really explain what they mean by the initial rate of descent. Is that your descent at the IAF? Is that the descent rate in your in route descent? Or is that the descent rate at the final approach fix? We'll talk about that here in a minute. Make sure you look at and review lost comm instructions if required. Make sure you look at the missed approach and or any climb out. Look at the aerodrome sketch, also known as airport diagram. That's the little stamp in the bottom corner of the instrument approach plate. And then finally, the nav aids, review them and set them for the approach itself. So let's take a look at how we would do an end mailman. So for our example, let's use the ILS or localizer 15 right here at Randolph. So if I was to review this, I'm still out in my MOA, I'm doing my fence out, and under N nav aids, or I'm sorry, R, in a Doctor Who, R, review the approach, I say, okay, I'm gonna review the approach for the ILS or localizer 15 right at Randolph. So the nav aids set for my positional awareness. So for my uh, initial recovery here, I'm gonna to wanna to be on the Randolph Vortec, which is channel one, 112.3. It may also include how you're going to set up your GPS to also use positional awareness uh, and get some, uh, some range and bearing from it. Either set it at the Vortec or the final approach fix, or maybe you're using that as part of the Augur ILS to get yourself to must be. M, minimum altitudes. So here are some of the minimum altitudes that you would want to brief. I need to be at 4,000 feet before I get to Musby, which is the 359 radial at 14 DME. 
I'm then going to maintain 4,000 feet while I arc around to final. I have to stay at 4,000 feet until I'm inside of 12 DME, where I can then step down to 3,100 feet until the final approach fix at 8.1, or glide slope intercept if I'm doing the ILS, which should happen at 8.1. My emergency safe altitude is 4,200 feet within 100 nautical miles of the Randolph or attack. My min safe for most of my approach is going to be 3,100. It's definitely the higher, that's the min sector, uh, of the two that I'm going to be flying through. And then the weather minimums that I need. I'm flying the ILS, so my decision altitude is 961. I need an RVR of 4,000. Height above touchdown is 200 feet. And the weather requirements that I have for the approach are a ceiling of 200 and a visibility of three-quarter statute miles. A, altimeter. Okay, I'm going to get that from the ATIS, so make sure that I have that set in. I, initial descent rate. Now, when I went through pilot training back in the 80s, they made a big deal of the end mailman and the fact that the initial rate of descent they're talking about is not at the IAF or my en route descent, but it's the descent rate that I plan on using from the final approach fix down to either my MDA or my decision altitude. So if I'm gonna brief that, you can see if I'm flying the ILS, it says that the ILS is a three degree glide path. So how do I calculate a VSI? It's my pitch times my ground speed in nautical miles per minute times 100. So if I'm flying final at 110 knots, that's approximately two nautical miles per minute, times three degrees times 100, that would give me a 600 foot per minute rate of descent from the final approach fix down to my decision altitude. So to do that, I need to use line on line 21% if I'm flying the ILS. Now, you can also, if you want, brief the other descent rates if you want. But as a minimum, make sure that you do brief from the final approach fix to your decision altitude or minimum descent altitude. L is loss com. Make sure you review the loss com. In this case, because we're in the local area, all you really need to brief is that, hey, loss com is going to be in accordance with the in-flight guide. Of course, if you're going to brief that, you need to make sure that you know what the in-flight guide says to do for lost com prior to the approach and on the approach. The second M is for the missed approach or climb out. So if I'm flying the ILS to 15 right and I plan on doing a full stop, I need to make sure that I review Regardless of what I'm doing, I need to make sure I review the published missed approach. So in this case, published missed approach is to climb to 3,000 feet out the Randolph Vortec 159 radial to 13 DME, which is give key, and expect ATC instructions while I'm en route there. If I'm planning on doing multiple approaches, then I need to coordinate climb out. For here at Randolph, we do have a climb out called the racetrack procedure, which is in your in-flight guide. So if I'm planning on doing the ILS 15 right, touch and go back to radar to get more approaches, then not only do I want to brief the published mist, but also brief the expected climb out of what the racetrack procedure would be. And then certainly I want to pay attention to what actually I am given to do. The second A, aerodrome sketch. There's a lot of information in this aerodrome sketch. One thing to remember, the whole reason for reviewing the aerodrome sketch is I'm trying to paint a picture of my mind of what to expect when I break out of the weather. How is this bringing me in towards the approach? Should I be looking straight ahead because it brings me straight in? Or should I be looking slightly off to the side because it brings me in at an angle? Are there any obstacles that I need to be aware of out there once I leave my MDA or 
pass through my decision altitude? Are there any barriers or displaced thresholds? Are there any visual glide slope indicators such as PAPIs or VASIs? Are they on the left or are they on the right? Of course, double checking. This runway is long enough, isn't it? And it is wide enough for my, uh, to meet my needs and my requirements. And that also can figure into how long is the runway in case I'm doing a non-precision and I don't pick up the runway at the VDP. I don't pick it up until I'm somewhere between my VDP and my missed approach point. One thing we don't want to do in that case is shift or, I'm sorry, keep our aim point and fly a steeper, higher descent rate down to the runway. If we pick up the runway late, then we need to know how much runway do we have. Can we afford to shift that aim point further down to maintain a nice three degree glide path? So it's important to take note of my runway lengths. What types of lighting do I have out there uh, that are gonna help me find the runway, uh, such as high intensity runway lighting on all runways? Are there approach lightings? As you can see to one five right, there is no approach lighting. The only approach lighting is over on one five left. Maybe even take note of most of the airport when I break out is gonna be off to my left. If I break out of the weather and see most of the airport off to my right, I'm probably lined up on the wrong runway. So one of the other things is not just what to expect so I can define what this landing environment is, but I also want to get, if I can, a positive identification on the airport that I'm trying to land at. A lot of civilian pilots have landed at Biggs Army Airfield and a lot of military people have landed at El Paso International because those airports are fairly close to each other. So we wanna make sure to positively, be able to positively identify the runway and the airport that we're landing at. <clears throat> Last end then are the nav aids for my approach. In this case, I wanna have channel one, DME hold, channel six for the localizer, and make sure I have my inbound course of 145 set up in my course select window before I get on to final. So there, uh, there is the N mailman check. That is just one example of how to run it and the things to review. As you can see, it jumps around from item to item. It's not very chronological. Uh, and it can be, like I said, very lengthy if you don't practice it. But in a nutshell, there's your end mailman check. <laughs>